This video is brought to you by patreon.com slash worst take. Get access to exclusive live streams and Discord servers, on-screen shout outs, and early access to some videos when you join now. Help make sure that we can continue to make content like this by supporting the Patreon. Links are in the description down below. All right, so the Browns lost today versus the Chargers, and I wanted to come back on here and talk about what from that game does concern me um, when it comes to long-term things and where I think the Browns might have to make a bigger move than what people are planning here. Um, and what from that game doesn't really concern me too much here, right? Now, if we're just talking about whether Jameis should start or not, I know some people were bringing up DTR. Um, I think it's fine if Jameis starts the rest of the year. The Browns are in a situation where the playoffs are very far-fetched for them the rest of the way. And let's face what happened today. Jameis Winston had a bad passing performance versus the NFL's best passing defense. Like, I don't think enough people have talked about that. Like, it's been a lot of people getting their takes off about Jameis, Ken Dorsey, Kevin Stefanski. Like, people have been getting their takes off all over the place based on whatever thing they want to be proven right about. But a lot of these takes ignore the fact that the Chargers are the best defense in the NFL right now by a lot of metrics, and especially by metrics that measure passing performance, right? They've only given up 91 points all season. It's number one by a significant margin. It would suggest that this defense is really, really good, right? More, Much better than we anticipated coming into this game. I thought there was a chance if you get that defense on the field a lot that you could break them. The Browns got them on the field a lot. They never broke them. Um, this is a defense that what last the last few games for the Chargers, if we look at what the Chargers defense has held teams to, they have held what the Browns to 10, the Saints to eight, the Cardinals to 17, the Broncos to 16, the Chiefs to 17, the Steelers to 20, um, the Panthers to three points and the Raiders to 10. So they have only given up. 20 points one time they've not given up more than 20 points all season so a lot of people talking about this game as if like the Chargers defense is regular and it was all the Browns offense that wasn't executing and not a, not enough respect is given to the Chargers who came into this game with the best defense in the NFL now again wasn't talked about like that. I don't think a lot of us really knew that this Chargers defense was like that until today. But if you look at the numbers, I mean, look at these passing numbers that they've given up all year. They have the lowest amount of passing first downs given up in all the NFL with 111. They've only given up six touchdowns. They've gotten six interceptions. That does not include today's total, right? This is before today's game. Um, and they've only given up 1,354 passing yards. So, when it comes to the passing attack, is Ken Dorsey a bad offensive coordinator? Is Kevin Stefanski bad at this? Is uh, Jameis Winston unfit to play for the rest of the year? I, I'm not going to read too much into it because the Browns passing offense at best could be described as mediocre, right? Like, yeah, Cedric Tillman's making some nice steps. Yes, um, Jerry Judy is taking some nice steps, but even when they had that great performance last week, I made the point of saying the Browns offense is not going to be world beaters on a consistent basis. Right. Um, and again, they proved not to be world beaters. They're a mediocre offense that went up against the best defense in the NFL. It should have looked like this, like, uh, objectively speaking, if we're just looking at like, who's who the Chargers were coming in, this defense is playing at an incredible level, um, especially when you consider their pass defense, their top three in yards allowed. They've given up the best touchdown to interception ratio in all of the NFL. Nobody is even. They are even there. Um, yards for play there. So if you're asking me if I'm concerned because the passing game wasn't super successful because Jameis threw three interceptions, um, Jameis throwing three interceptions versus a normal defense wouldn't like shake me. I, I've been pretty vocal about how Jameis is capable of throwing three interceptions in a game, right? Like he's just as capable of three touchdowns as three interceptions. It's just going to be what it is with Jameis. Um, but 
that that doesn't surprise me that did that happen versus that caliber of a defense like it doesn't excuse everything that happened in that game for the Cleveland Browns offense but we do need to talk about that with respect to the Chargers defense who might be the best defense in the NFL like I don't think we came into that thinking that but if you look at the numbers the Chargers defense most certainly the best passing defense in the NFL and they look like it today great coverage like they held up. The Browns tried some things to beat some different coverages. The guys kind of did their, their corners did what they needed to do to lurk and, and break some of these coverage beaters. Like now you got to tip your hat sometimes in the NFL. The Chargers defense just played great. So Jameis, we all knew at best could be a bridge and bridge quarterbacks are going to have performances like this. This isn't out the normal for bridge quarterbacks. Um, I think it is encouraging that you had. Uh, 270 yard performances on an individual standpoint definitely not from a team standpoint from a couple of your wide receivers here even though Jerry Judy's we talked about it was a lot in garbage time I thought what Cedric Tillman did in this game was impressive and encouraging at least on his point but what does concern me um, is the performance that the Browns had in the run game and the reason it concerns me is that the Chargers came into this game basically saying, we're going to drop four, we're going to only leave six in the box, and we're going to rely on putting the Browns wide receivers in tight coverage and hoping Jameis throws into some tight windows and we get some turnovers. That was the game plan going in for the Chargers defense, and they executed that game plan in the secondary beautifully. The consequence and what you are willing to let happen by going with that game plan, if you're the Chargers, is the Browns run game to flourish, right? Because you're going to put your safeties back. You're not putting a bunch of guys on the line of scrimmage. You're not stacking the box. You're saying to yourself, we're not going to let Jameis get confident in this game. We're not going to let Jameis um, be comfortable in this game. We're going to not blitz him as much we're going to not give him a bunch of open space we're going to make him throw into tight windows and see if he's going to be accurate today which is a good strategy versus Jameis Winston I talked about this on AFC North Talk where I had criticisms of Zach Orr blitzing at the end of that game for the Baltimore Ravens because I felt like the better strategy would be to just put eight in coverage and force Jameis to fit a tight window because the problem with Jameis the decision making can be wonky at times, and that certainly showed itself in this game. But really, it's the accuracy with Jameis Winston that tends to fluctuate more than the decision making, right? If you look at the interceptions today, the decisions he made weren't terrible. It was the accuracy that usually kind of bit him in the ass, and it's that what that usually hurts Jameis. It's why I call him football J.R. Smith, right? He's capable of being deadly accurate at times. He's capable of just missing the entire hoop at times, and that was on front today for Jameis Winston, right? It was an accurate day for Jameis, and that was the game plan that they went in. So the Browns knew naturally after like the first quarter with the Chargers using that game plan, the way to win this game would be to have success running the ball. And they tried to run the ball. They ran the ball a lot in the first half of this game, and they couldn't get a single thing going. And that to me is concerning because you're getting beat six on five in the run game and averaging two and a half yards a carry in the run game that should not happen even if Nick Chubb is not in there right we're talking about a Browns offensive line that's healthy at this point you had your pick between Jed Wills and Dewan Jones at left tackle you have Joe Batonio at left guard you have Ethan Posick at center, a healthy Wyatt Teller at right guard, and then also a uh, Jack Conklin. And you also have what Jeff Swain. You also have David Njoku. Like you have Michael Dunn. You have everything you need to be successful, or at least everything that we thought you needed to be successful, healthy in the run game. Even Nick Chubb, even Jerome Ford, right? You had all your running backs healthy. And this was the best performance we can get out of them. The Browns tried all kind of different run schemes. They did wide zone. They did gap schemes. All kind of different ways of running the ball. All kind of different directions of running the ball. None of it worked. That to me is concerning. Right? It's concerning from the aspect of, hey, is Nick Chubb going to be Nick Chubb again? Right? 
makes me wonder, should you look at an Ashton Genty? Is, he, is he's available? You know, because you need a playmaker. If Nick Chubb can't be the playmaker for this offense anymore, you might want to go draft one. And I think that's one of the better playmakers you can get on offense. I think the best playmaker in the draft class is, is uh, Travis Hunter. But Travis Hunter is a defensive player, more than likely. So he's not going to be a playmaker for your offense. It's concerning from that standpoint. It's concerning from um, a Ken Dorsey standpoint where you look at Ken Dorsey and the one thing that's notable after he left at Buffalo is that Buffalo became one of the best running teams in the NFL after he left. And they still run the ball well. Is this something to do with Ken Dorsey? I don't know. Kevin Stefanski has had strong rush teams, but it, they ran some of the Kevin Stefanski run plays. It still didn't work. Or is this a concern because Joe Batonio, just not Joe Batonio anymore. Uh, Ethan Posick, not playing good anymore. Right? Um, your tackles, Jed Wills, Dewan Jones, pick one. Both liabilities in the run game. That to me is the most concerning thing. Right? Jameis, looking like Jameis against one of the best defenses in the NFL. Maybe we just got caught up in the Jameis juice, or maybe we just got caught up in the excitement of beating the Ravens. We did that we kind of overlooked the fact that the Chargers did have one of the best defenses coming into the coming into this game. And they played like it. Um, and they certainly shut down Jameis. They certainly shut down this entire passing attack. That's not too concerning to me. Like that is going to happen when you have a bridge quarterback or a backup quarterback, whatever you want to classify Jameis as. That's going to happen, right? Especially when we don't have a ton of playmakers on offense to overcome that. The Browns run game, though, should have those playmakers. We talk about David and Joku being a playmaker as far as like run blocking and also as a receiver. Uh, we talk about Nick Chubb being a playmaker. We talk about Joe Batonio being a playmaker, Wyatt Taylor being a playmaker, Jack Conklin being a playmaker in the run game. And the best we can get is 2.4 yards a carry when there's six people in the box. I know that they did a good job getting to the line of scrimmage when they were in quarters coverage, but they're still coming down from quarters coverage. We should be able to win on the line of scrimmage and get to the second level pretty easily. And that's what was concerning. It was never easy for this team to run the ball. And they're healthy. And they have Nick Chubb. And they couldn't get off their blocks. Or they couldn't get to the second level. That is the most concerning thing that I saw in this game. People got their takes about the quarterback position. But this run game looking like that points to a bigger problem. Right? Like, is it the offensive line? Do we got to, like, Joe Batonio, what are we going to do after this year? We're going to put in Zach Zenter? Zach Zenter hasn't looked great either. He's had some moments, but he hasn't looked great consistently. We don't have an heir apparent for Ethan Posick. You know, uh, Jed Wills, Dewan Jones, someone, one of them got to play tackle. Jack Conklin's likely gone after this year. So that to me is. My biggest concern coming out of this game is what did not happen with the run game. Um, because, yes, the Chargers are good run defense. I don't want to leave that out, and I don't want to not give them credit. They are a good run defense. They're a top five run defense. They're the best passing defense in the NFL, but they're a top five run defense. They average about, what, 4.8 4 yards per carry on the ground. They don't give up much total yards. but they are a pretty good run defense, but they're a great pass defense. So the pass stuff, I'm not as concerned about. That's just a great defense doing what great defenses do to teams that are starting Jameis Winston. This run game, though, we should have been able to compete. And the truth is, we were not competitive on the ground. We got dominated by six people in the box by the weakness of that defense. That has me more concerned than the passing game. Um, and has me asking more questions about the future of this team. And I think it's personnel related, if I'm being honest with you. I don't think this is uh, about the play calling or about the play designs or anything like that. I think this is simply 
we need better players in the run game. And we're not getting better play out of our players in the run game. I think it's really that simple. We'll see. Still a whole season of games to watch. Well, a whole half a season of games to watch. So we'll see how this plays out. The Browns are going to go into the bye week. Maybe that'd be big for them, right? Because, yeah, these guys have been healthy, but getting them that extra week of rest might do wonders. What I really want to do for the rest of the season is be able to evaluate what this team can be going forward and what this team isn't right now so I can hopefully see where this team needs to focus their resources for the next couple of years, what, let it be draft or free agency. That's what I'm really looking forward to getting out the rest of this season from the Cleveland Browns. But if you're asking me what from this game has me concerned, I know a lot of hyperbole is going to be about the the passing offense in this game, um, which went against one of the best defenses in the NFL, the best passing defense in the NFL. Um, and yes, Jameis threw three interceptions, and he I think he threw over 200 yards and a touchdown in this one as well on like what? It had to be under 65% passing. So Jameis wasn't good. He had like a 28 QBR in this game. He could have played better for sure, but – this was within the range of expected results with Jameis, especially given this situation. Um, and again, Jameis, not the future quarterback of your team, but you do expect Nick Chubb to be there in the future, or at least you hoped that Nick Chubb could be there in the future. You do expect like Wyatt Teller to be there, Ethan Posick to be there, Dewan Jones to be there. And that lack of performance, given that they had the advantage in the run game all day. Well, that has me a bit uneasy. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Y'all have a great day. Have a better night. Peace.